Hey guys, welcome to Trial Fields. Today we're gonna to talk all about editing workflow. So when we're talking about workflow, really what we mean is the different steps you take in order to accomplish that thing. So in this case, we're talking about editing workflow. So what are the steps that we need to take in order to get our edit done? Everybody has a little bit of a different workflow. It's really more of an art than a science, makes sense. There's no one workflow that's just the perfect workflow that works for everybody. You really need to figure out what's the best workflow for you. And to figure that out, it really helps to see what other people are doing. What's their workflow? What are the steps that they're doing in order to get their edit done? Then you can take bits and pieces from there. Oh, that's really cool. I'll take that into my workflow and that really doesn't work. I have a better solution for that. I'll keep that part of my workflow. And you're just piecing together, figuring out the best workflow that works for you and the types of films that you're creating. This workflow is really what I'm using for YouTube videos pretty much 95% of the time. There's only a few instances where I'm doing a little bit of extra, but this is the workflow that I do almost all the time. And so first step is to organize your media. It sounds really lame, but it's super important, especially as your projects get bigger and bigger and bigger, you really need to be organized. And it helps to get in the habit, even on your smaller projects, even just YouTube videos, when you might think that it's not really worth it to be this organized, it's taking more time, it really helps to be organized. And that starts with right away your folders in your project. So here we have this little edit, Norway 2016. We have our footage, we have graphics, we we have project files, renders, and sound. And then some of these folders are divided into other folders still. So for example, in footage, we have our A camera, which is the C300, and then we have some drone footage. Or in sound, we have the music, and then we have sound effects. It really helps to stay organized. So when you're looking for a file, it's really easy to find it. Or when you're importing other footage, it's easy to just place it into the right places and it doesn't end up this huge mess of a folder. So stay organized. That's the first step to my workflow always. Then we open up our project file and we import our footage. In this case, it's the footage, the video clips, the graphics, and the sound. Then we take our footage and we drag it onto this little icon on the bottom of Premiere. And this makes a sequence with the exact settings of that video clip. I find this to be the best way to start a sequence. Then you don't have to fiddle around with all the other settings when you're starting a sequence. It just makes the perfect sequence for that footage. And then if you do need to change something like the resolution, which happens pretty often, you can really easily go and change it. For example, in this case, we're gonna make it a anamorphic crop or a 235 aspect, which basically means having the black bars on top and bottom. So we're just gonna change the height to 1,678. So there we go, our sequence is the right size now for our edit. Also, make another bin for your sequences. It's super important to stay organized within your project file also. So we're gonna rename the sequence to Norway 2016 and we're gonna move that into the sequences bin. For me, I like to take all the footage and just dump it into the sequence and then I start editing from there. Some people like to use the source monitor and find the exact portion of the clip and then bring that in. I just find this to be a little bit slower for me. I just like dumping it all in there and then just really quickly going through it and finding the best clips that I need for my edit. Again, this is just one of those things that works faster for me, but by no means is it the best or the only way to do this. Then we can bring in the song and we're gonna edit the song a little bit so it fits our edit the best. I like to cut out some portions, especially for something like this, which is a really short edit. I want some of the best portions of that song. So I'm gonna cut out some sections so that we get to the best parts a little bit faster. This way it's not as repetitive and also we get some nice buildups and all of that good stuff. I usually end up editing to the music. So if there's a snare or a drum, that's where the cuts are gonna be. And this is for the whole edit. I try to stick to that. And then if there's some buildups in the song, for example, I try to create my edits and work with the visuals so they really fit that buildup and that there's a payoff at the end of that buildup when the beat drops. Then we add in some sound effects. I like to use a lot of ambient sounds, but in this case, we're just using some swooshes and some different sounds to kind of accentuate the cuts and just help with some of those transitions. 
but ambient sounds really just bring to life your edit. For example, if you're seeing water in your edit, it really helps to hear some sort of water sounds. It just tricks the mind into thinking that the sound is actually coming from the water. For example, with drone footage, you're obviously not gonna have any sound, but it really helps to add in some sort of sound effects and try to make these really natural and don't make them too overbearing. Don't make them too loud because then they'll become really distracting. Really, they shouldn't be distracting at all. That's the thing with sound is that if it's really good sound design, you're not even gonna really notice it. It's just gonna be so organic to the edit and it just adds a lot, but you're not gonna notice it. It's not gonna distract you. And then we can mix the audio a little bit. I've made a little preset that just has some plugins in it and I just drag and drop it onto the audio files. And this is a big tip. If you're constantly adding the same combination of effects to different clips, make a preset. It's really easy to make a preset. And if you guys wanna know more about that, I can do a whole different video on making your own presets in Premiere. But basically this audio preset just has a few different plugins that I can just drag and drop. And then I can just tweak the levels a little bit and I'm good to go. That way I don't always have to select those same effects and keep adding them on or even adjust them because I've already done that in the preset. And then I do the same for color grading. I have a little color grading preset in Premiere. And all this preset really does is add a LUT through Lumetri and then also a Colorista, which adds the contrast and some different color changes. And this just gives me a really good starting point to start working from. The LUT here is the Cine Desaturated LUT, which is probably my favorite LUT out of the Cine LUTs pack LUTs. Um, I just really like it. It just works really well for so many different cameras and so many different videos. I make a new adjustment layer and then I put it over top all of my footage and then I add that preset onto there. And then I'm just going through each of my clips, tweaking them around so that they all look good, changing the contrast and the colors, saturation a little bit so they fit well from one clip to the next, especially when you're trying to match cameras. Remember the matching cameras color grade video that I put out? You really need to make sure that there's a nice consistency even between cameras so the colors look the same. And remember, do not go overboard with your color grade. Make it nice and subtle. This is the most important thing for a color grade. It should really enhance your footage but again it shouldn't be distracting you shouldn't be thinking why are these colors so weird why is there purple and weird colors everywhere make it nice and subtle so it's not distracting to the viewer all right then we're ready to export set your in and out point for what you want to be exporting then we go to export and what I like to do is make a ProRes master file first. This is kind of a really high quality file that you can have just in case something happens or maybe you wanna use that same video in a different video, then you have a really high quality copy of that video. This isn't a file that I'm gonna be putting online or anything like that. It's really just a master file to kind of make sure that I have this video in a really high quality. So for that, we're gonna choose the format QuickTime and then we're just gonna change the output name to Norway 2016 Master. And we're putting this into the renders folder of our project. Remember, stay organized. The video codec is gonna be Apple ProRes 422 or 422 HQ, depending on how crazy you wanna go. HQ is gonna be better quality, but it's also a really big file size. But that's the best option if you want the best quality. Hit match source, render at maximum bit depth, and then check use maximum render quality, and then hit the Q and this will bring it into Adobe Encoder. Then we're going back to Premiere to export the H.264 version, and this is gonna be the version that you're actually posting online. So this time we're choosing the format H.264, let's call this Norway 2016, render at maximum bit depth, Bitrate settings, we're gonna choose VBR 2-pass and target 25 for HD and 35 for 4K. In this case, it's 4K, so we're gonna go with 35. For maximum, for HD, I would say around 35, and for 4K, we're gonna go with 45. Use maximum render quality and then hit the Q button. Then once we're in Adobe Encoder, we're just gonna hit this play button and we're good to go. It's gonna export both of those videos and you can even start editing in Premiere again if you want some other video or whatever. You can just let this export in Adobe Encoder. I really like Encoder, it just kind of frees up things so I can just get a lot done really quickly. So there we go, that is my editing workflow and this is how I do it almost all the time. There's only some projects that I wanna do a lot of grading or motion graphics or anything else like that that I'm taking into After Effects. So I'm just gonna take that whole sequence, bring it into After Effects, do all the color grading and motion graphics and text and whatever, and then bring it back into Premiere and then export from there. But really this is my workflow for 90, 95% of my films. 
especially for YouTube. This is a really good workflow I find for YouTube videos. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them down below and I'll try to answer as many as possible. I know there's a lot of questions with workflow because there's just so many options. There's no one right way and you really just need to figure out what the best way is for you. And a lot of times this just comes by experience. You're gonna make video after video and you're gonna start realizing like, oh, there's a better way of doing this and I can be more efficient here and I'm just gonna make this a little bit better in my workflow, faster, whatever it is. It's really worth it to take the time and think about your workflow because it's gonna save you a lot of time, headaches, and all of that. And it's just gonna make your process a lot more enjoyable. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and guys, enjoy the filmmaking process and go get some of those travel feels. Mm-hmm.